Let me talk about talk. Here we go. Uh. How he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Drombos, of course, and it is Thursday, so it means time for our Thursday Trends episode. I was supposed to have a guest on today's show. Unfortunately, she had a scheduling conflict, so she had to uh, cancel. We're going to reschedule for another time. So I'm just going to fly solo on today's show because, as y'all know, we don't let anything stand in our way here, and we just keep it moving, uh, keep it pushing, even if it means throwing everything you prepared out the window. But here we are. Now, today we're going to be talking about, man, the Internet's favorite like meme and favorite thing right now, rightfully so, um, the ass whooping that happened in Alabama uh, during a, a with a riverboat worker and some white people and the Black Avengers came to the, the rescue. We're going to talk all about that because it was absolutely amazing. We're going to talk about Anita, the artist Anita, and she was on a, a recent podcast talking about how she's rethinking the idea of, of casual sex and, and being alone. And truthfully, this was going to be a better conversation when I would be uh, feeding off of another person. But you know what? We're just going to we're going to roll with it and just and, and you're going to have to hear my opinion, I guess, on this. And uh, you can DM me yours, I guess, at the end of the day. We'll have the conversation that way. Uh, then on a positive side of things for me, hint this segment, we will talk about the nominees for MTV's Video Music Awards Artist of the Year, including someone from our community who has just been crushing it this year. So we'll talk about that as well as you have a, a Latino launching a platform to help immigrants find housing. So really amazing stuff there. We'll get into all of it. But first, let's kind of start with the nonsense, the BS uh, in a segment we call for the people. In the back. Say a lot for the people in the back. Say a lot for the people in the back. All right, so I'm just gonna first and foremost start with this ass whooping that happened in uh in, in Alabama, right? There was like this brawl that broke out in Alabama as a black riverboat worker was being jumped by a group of white people, and out of nowhere. His saviors, his angels came in there. Uh, a bunch of, of of other fellow black men came in there and just started whooping people's ass, defending this man rightfully so. Um, now, apparently, this fight uh, started when a worker objected to a pontoon boat uh, docking in a particular spot that was preventing the larger river boat from, from being able to dock and, and get on shore, right? So apparently, these white guys had a little pontoon boat going, you know, having a Having a couple cores lats going on over there, and um, one of the the workers from the the riverboat, I believe he was a co captain, a black man, you know, went up to them and, and asked them if they could move their boat because the larger riverboat had to dock and they couldn't fit anywhere else. The white men refused. Then all of a sudden, we just see one of these white men throw a haymaker at the the black co captain. Um, then a couple other white people jump in and they are attacking him. And then literally, it's like people magically were popping out of nowhere. Literally, some dude jumped off the boat and started swimming to shore to help this uh, black man that was being jumped by the, the group of white men, the, the co-pilot or co-captain, I believe, of the riverboat. Uh, and then all of a sudden, another group of black men came out of nowhere and just started handing out ass weapons left and right. And it was very satisfying to see. I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't enjoy every bit of this. With the exception of the woman who got hit by the chair. I understand she was partaking in things she shouldn't have, but I think we got to draw the line there where we're just not going to hit a woman over the head with a chair. Uh, but other than that, I was on board with everything else that happened. I think this is white privilege at its finest. And just as far as like official, you know, police uh, stuff, only the, the white people were charged. Uh, I believe three people were charged. They are looking to question the man who allegedly hit a woman over the head with a chair. But other than that, it is the three white men. They did look into if this could be considered a hate crime. I believe they consulted the FBI and the FBI said no. So it's just sort of, uh, you know, regular sort of assault here. But again, to quote my man, Charlemagne the God, the caucasity of it all, you know, it, it's white privilege at its finest. You know, I think and and. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to lead with empathy these days. So I'm trying to like, really, let's just zoom out. Right. But it is white privilege where these guys thought that they were so entitled 
that they couldn't like help out their fellow man who's trying to park a gigantic boat and they can't move their little fucking Dewey, um, you know, somewhere else, right? And then to the point that they feel like they uh, have the right to start throwing hands, and not only like throwing hands, but then randomly just decide all three of them are going to jump this one guy, right? So you know, an ass whooping that obviously these fellows needed to to have in their life to to let them know, you know, they should not be fucking around and finding out for things that are really completely unnecessary. Maybe they should have a little humility, a little humanity, and they wouldn't have gotten stomped out of their Crocs, right? Which one dude uh, looked like he just got stomped through his Crocs. Literally, his Crocs were like uh, almost at his at his knee because his Croc got destroyed from the level of ass whooping that he was receiving. But I, I think this just like in a, in a bigger, larger scheme, like what does this mean for the zeitgeist, right? It's a lot of what I was talking about. It's like this lack of humanity that we have, right? Like, how difficult would it have been to move your shitty little boat when this guy is asking you, like, hey, listen, we're just trying to park our, our river boat, get these customers off of off of the boat who have been on here. We have nowhere else to go. It's much harder for us to park than it is for you. Do you mind just moving your little fucking dinghy? And the fact that these men, like, refused to do so, then broke out into white privilege machismo, like, it, it, it just kind of shows you how far apart I think we some of us are in 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 this life from being able to just exist as human beings and understand that we're all just trying our best here, right? And this is an example of that. Again, an ass whooping these men probably needed and was was coming for a long time. But it's it's just again, it continues to speak to where we are as humans. And not all of us, right? But many of us, where we we really feel we don't have to like, I don't know, we don't have to put anybody else's feelings into consideration or anybody else's experience into consideration other than our own, right? Like our our experience, our feelings, our own comfort supersedes the entire world. And and listen, I know it's like a bit of kind of contradictory to like the idea of setting boundaries and putting yourself first and all those things, right? But that that I think only goes up to a certain point if we're talking about your own you know, uh, personal well-being, right? And and things that like bring out the worst in you, separating yourself and, and making sure you put your own mental health first. In this type of situation, you putting yourself first of not wanting to move your little boat, it, that that doesn't fall under the idea of setting boundaries and things like that. That's, that just makes you a shitty person, a shitty sort of neighbor coexisting on this thing called, you know, planet Earth, right? Again, these are just examples of, of, just a weird selfish society that we exist in where we don't feel like we have to kind of um, help one another out. And I I really want to get away from that. And I'm not perfect at it. But I I just think instances like this kind of showcase the level of selfishness that exists, you know, in in humanity, right? And luckily, these guys got the brake speed off of them to teach them a lesson in, in humility. And maybe it changes them moving forward. Who knows? We'll see. Now, moving on to the the other topic I wanted to talk about today. Um, Anita, right? The artist Anita. And she is on the podcast Call Her Daddy, right? And usually I don't reference a podcast like this one, but I think this is an interesting conversation. So Anita has been known as like this very free individual, um, very free sexually and sort of somebody who's been like a really big proponent of like casual sex and, and not really hiding it, owning owning that part of herself, right? She had a really interesting conversation on on that podcast, sort of rethinking her reasons for for having sex. You know, she said, quote, I don't want to have sex with a guy because I want him to fall in love for me or because I don't want to lose him. She explains, I want to have sex because I feel like doing it because I feel like this guy deserves this queen. Basically saying like she doesn't want to use, I guess, sex as like a weapon to make this dude fall for her or you know, as a means to kind of keep him hanging around, but instead wants the sex to kind of come from a place of, you know, worthiness and feeling like this is a person that genuinely is worthy of her sharing that part of herself, right? Beyond that, she talks about the idea of learning to to love spending time alone, you know, and she says, quote, I can be alone for days, you know, cook my own food and be like, wow, life is beautiful. She talks about not having had sex in in months at this point, And she also said, quote, I didn't find anyone special enough that I would think like, "Okay, this one deserves to come here. She explains. So I'm not going to keep reading the the entire conversation uh, from Anita. I I think we all kind of get the point I'm trying to try to make here. And and last thing I'll say, she says, quote, before she had a different attitude towards casual sex. Right. And now saying, quote, 
I was crazy before. I used to fuck even like one person that crossed me on the street. I would be like, you come here. Uh, and now basically saying that she's become more comfortable being alone after battling her disease with endometriosis, right? And saying how before that, she always needs to have people around, friends, this and that, right? And I, I bring up this conversation. Obviously, it's like a silly conversation sort of amidst um, a musician and a, a sort of podcaster who is, is famous for just sort of mindless conversations in general. But it does speak to a lot of things, right? I think as I get older, recognizing sort of what's important and also recognizing like, man, a lot of people don't know how to be alone with themselves, right? A lot of that fear of being alone with yourself has you sort of making decisions that aren't necessarily in your best interest, right? Maybe it's spending extra money because you're going out every weekend so that you don't have to sit home alone, right? Because you can't bear the thought of being alone. Um, maybe it is dating people that you're not really like head over heels for, um, but you're just doing it because you enjoy having somebody to text or you are even just hanging around people that aren't really doing much for you. But again, it's just a warm body to spend some time next to it, to not have to be in your own head, right? And whatever your particular situation is. And I think I had done an Instagram post about this, not about this specifically, but about like the divorce rate in this country. And I think a lot of it comes from people getting into relationships and then marriage and, and all that comes with it before really knowing themselves, I think, to a degree, right? And before really healing a lot of of the things that they deal with so that they can come to the table from a place of not needing another person, but instead wanting a person to be in your life, right? And I think that's a very big distinction because I think needing leads to desperation to a degree, right? And desperation leads to you settling. And I think that's why the divorce rate kind of is what it is to a degree, right? A lot of settling happened. A lot of people were pushed into uh, relationships because they were told this is what they're supposed to be doing at this age, that type of shit, right? And obviously, this is very nuanced. I'm not trying to like say this is across the board, but generally speaking, right? We're just going to kind of generalize here without knowing everybody's particular situation. And and even myself, you know, I'm going to be very honest. You know, I had gotten out of a a long term relationship earlier this year, and my first inclination was to kind of just jump back out there into the dating scene and and into even like the hookup culture of being single and all that kind of stuff. And I, along the way, met, you know, a few really cool women who I got along with and that we were, you know, hanging out and spending time together and, and kind of staying in contact. And they were filling that void, right, of a relationship or a, a girlfriend that I um, was used to having for years at this point. You know, what has happened recently, I, I've sort of had to just like clear the table on all of that, right? And a, recognize that me just sort of trying to fulfill that void, I'm bringing a lot of people, I'm, a lot of, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing people or a person into a fold where maybe they have a different expectation than I do. And I'm sort of not only just wasting their time, but I think I'm also, and unintentionally, by the way, and, and I try to be as upfront about it as possible, but I think not, not sort of, I don't know, I, I feel like, it, it, it's almost like, you know, when a bomb goes off and there's like casualties, right? Like unexpected casualties or there's like shrapnel. Or there's just like, you know, all things that linger behind. Right. And it's like you, you have this mess as a result of this war that happened. Right. Or this bombing. And I feel like in the way that I'm approaching or had been where I'm really not taking the time to heal exactly as I should. Right. I have a lot in certain parts, but there are certain things I could do better. I'm also having a lot of collateral damage. That was a phrase I was looking for, right? I'm leaving collateral damage behind in the form of maybe women who were expecting something more from me or women who, even if I was up front, thought that maybe they could change me in that way, right? And and obviously they bear some some responsibility there, but collateral damage in the form of like, then that's, you know, extra people I have to have an awkward hello when I go out in, in certain areas or um, particular friend groups. And now it's like, oh, if I'm interested in somebody who's attached to that person, now there has to be this whole backstory of how I used to hang out with this other, you know, it's like collateral damage, right? That's what I mean when I'm saying that. I'm going off on like a weird tangent, a stream of thought. I promise I have a point to this. My, I guess my point being, all of that centers around the fact that 
I didn't take the time to relearn loving to be alone, right? And I love my own company. I genuinely do. Like, I, I, I genuinely love being in the studio on a regular basis. I love just, I'll, I'll be here on a Friday night if I'm not DJing or something, just like in my studio creating stuff and I'm okay with it. I'm by myself. I'm fine. I'm happy with that. I think it's more being alone in terms of like the emotional connection of somebody to be texting, somebody to be sharing, you know, funny shit with, or when something happens, good or bad, somebody there to, to kind of like have a conversation with about it, you know? And, and, you know, the little things, somebody to say goodnight to, somebody to, to wake up to in the morning, right? Those little things, right? I haven't taken the time to heal and be okay with not having that in my life, at least for the time being, right? And it's not, when I say healing, it's not like I want to get to the point where I never want or need any of those things or I never entertain them ever again. But it's to, to the point of saying, I'm good without it. and I want to get into something serious. I do want that eventually, but I'm not going to just hop into something out of necessity to fill that void, right? When I do invite somebody into my life again to share in those types of moments, I want it to be because I genuinely want them in my life and I want to do life with them rather than feeling like I'm just with somebody because I just need to have somebody to, to fill that void. And I hope that makes sense. And I think that's a lot of what she's sort of talking about. And I think that that goes beyond just even relationships, right? I think that could be friendships, right? I talked a lot about awareness in, in the last episode. If you haven't listened, go check that one out. I really am proud of that episode. But even sometimes you just keep friends around you that like, why am I friends with this person? It's literally just to fulfill that void of like, yeah, this is my drinking buddy that I have on Friday nights that I know I can always hit up because they have nothing else going on or whatever, right? Or that, you know, like, and, and it's just like not a quality relationship, not a quality friendship, but you keep them around because it fills that void because God forbid you had to stay in on a Friday night or God forbid you had to challenge yourself to meet new people, right? That That is 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 harder than just keeping this friend around who not really, doesn't really serve any other purpose in your life or doesn't add any other value aside from being your drinking buddy, right? And I think just really recognizing all of the sort of, things that we do in this life and all of us do it. I just told you how, how I was doing it. We all try, are trying to like fill voids rather than sort of heal them, right? We're putting band-aids over the, the wounds rather than healing the disease itself, right? And I think that's a lot of what this conversation brought up for me where she was talking about, you know, when she got sick and couldn't be having random people over all the time, it forced her to find comfort and happiness in her own company. And now that she has found that, it's made her rethink everything and made her say, why am I inviting so many different people into intimate parts of my life? Like, why would I keep doing that? Like, I, I don't feel that void anymore because I've, I've found a way to fulfill it within myself, right? So if I'm going to bring somebody into my space, I want it to be somebody that adds something to it rather than somebody who is sort of just there for, for the sake of being there, right? And I hope that made that made sense. I just think, I don't know, we gotta just challenge ourselves to keep thinking about why we do things, right? Or why we don't do things, right? And and I think a lot of that starts with that self-awareness and, and being able to like really just fall in love with yourself and not doing things out of necessity or desperation. I think that that's that's like not not necessity, that's a, a bad word. I think desperation by itself, I think, works. Not doing things out of desperation, right? Like when you make decisions out of desperation, you're not going to be making the best decision for yourself in the long run, right? Like if you are starving and you haven't eaten, you've been on running around all day long, it's like, fuck it, I'm just going to go to Taco Bell because they have a drive through it's quick, it's easy, and it tastes good, right? I'm just going to give into that. And like, obviously, that is not something that benefits you in the long term, right? Shit, in the short term, it probably messes up the rest of your night, you know, without getting into any gross details. But in the long term, it's also like not, conducive to you being healthy, right? You're really just making that decision out of convenience and desperation. Convenience is the other word I was looking for. And when you're making decisions in life based upon that, especially when you're talking about more serious things, right? Because we talk about the divorce rate and things like that. A lot of people got married based on convenience or desperation, feeling like they had this internal clock or this pressure. You know, you're not, you're not really thinking it through and you're not actually doing 
something that's making you genuinely happy or, or taking the time because that's harder, right? It takes more time. It takes more work and effort to actually find real love, real connection, real friends, whatever it is, right? You're just, you're taking the low hanging fruit, right? When you act out of desperation and when you act from a place of having a really big void that you're just trying to fill. Uh, so point being, do that self-work, have that self-awareness um, and before you're kind of inviting other situations in to just sort of surface level fill it. I hope that made sense. Uh, now, with that said, I want to move on to some positive things. Luckily, we are splitting up the show today. We have equal positive, equal sort of more serious topics, which I always like to do. So we'll, we'll do, talk about some positive stuff from our community in our Mi Gente segment. Mi gente. All right, so I want to start first in the world of pop culture, right? And the nominees for MTV's Video Music Awards Artist of the Year have come out. And actually, for the first time in history, they are all women, which is, is cool. That's a, a cool little sort of blip to be able to, to have on there. And then you also have two women from our community nominated for this list. You have Carol G, who has absolutely been crushing it, obviously, this year, and Shakira who has been like on this this dope little comeback and they obviously have a record together. And actually what's cool about this, it's almost like, it feels like Shakira had been kind of passing the baton off to Carol G. And I, I would imagine for someone like Carol G to be nominated in the same category as her has to be amazing. Amongst the other artists that are nominated, which are uh, Beyonce, Doja Cat, Nicki Minaj, and Taylor Swift. Uh, but I, I think looking at this, I think Shakira has been a, a, a staple of, of, of pop music for a long time, right? She's crossed over, she's done English records and things like that. But Someone like Carol G, it's the same thing as like the Bad Bunny effect, right? And somebody like Bad Bunny is partially a thing for this, where Carol G's music for the most part has been in Spanish. And for her to get a nomination on, on a big platform like this one, it's legendary, right? The VMAs is is a huge moment for, for her, but also I think Latin culture as a whole, right? Because I think you also could have people saying, like, okay, well, Bad Bunny is the anomaly, right? He's the exception to the rule. But everybody else, like they're not going to be able to break through in the same way that that he has. Right. And someone like Carol G is proving that theory wrong and actually taking it a step further because she's a woman. So it, it's it's a complete it's like adding a whole nother caveat to this conversation. The fact that a woman can have this type of effect, but also doing it in in Spanish and still be able to cross over in this way. Right. And I think this sort of nomination is. Uh, a beautiful representation of just how far we've come with our culture, our music, and all of the above. And um, you just love to see things like this. It continues to kick down the doors. And like that's why I really harp on the fact of now is our time as a community to be growing, to be learning, to be pushing forward, to be chasing after all the things that we want to do because the like the opportunities are there, right? They're they're looking now because they realize the value. Companies and corporations are looking for ways to incorporate us into what they're doing so we now just have to be great at so you know creating the products and then also supporting the products when they come out right and products could be anything from movies to music whatever it is just just really understanding that now is our time and like if we want to solidify ourselves as a mainstay amongst sort of popular culture we have to be unafraid to put our own ideas out there into the world and then support uh, those who are, are doing the same so love to see that big congrats to, to Kauji as well as shakira and the last one i wanted to talk about today Really just amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, you have a Latino, Nicholas Gonzalez, who has launched a platform to help immigrants find housing. Now, I got this article from WeArmyToo.com. And according to him, Americans have a better chance of obtaining shelter without language barriers. He says, quote, when, when renting rooms, we know that there are certain applications already built for Americans in some way where the process is much easier. And I'm, I'm not somebody who immigrated here, but when I had a, a trash credit score, I, that application process was the death of me for every apartment. So I can only imagine how much more difficult it is for somebody coming to this country, not a citizen, you know, fresh, fresh, uh, you know, on, on the the uh, the land here in America, uh, trying to navigate that whole process. It was difficult for me. I can only imagine. Now, Gonzalez uh, has become the CEO and founder of Latino Rooms, which is a website for Latinos. Um, where they can search for rooms for rent within the tri-state area. While the initiative is only uh, in New York, he plans to expand the platform to other cities. He said the business grew as more people search for housing, making the process much easier and safer for them. He aims to transform lives for migrants with no place to live after immigrating to a new city. The entrepreneur said he received many stories from Latinos who were grateful to find a room through the website. 
quote, we have received stories from people who told us if I couldn't find a room today, they would send me back to my country. Wow. And Gonzalez aims to continue his work by alleviating the stress Latins face daily, saying, quote, every day we try to improve to provide people with solutions in an economical, easy and safe way. I love this shit, man. This is like, oh, man, you're getting me fired up today, right? Because this is entrepreneurship in our community. Entrepreneurship also like helping the community, right? Like that, that's my fucking goal and dream in life. It's like, I want to be my own boss. I want to own my own business. But I also want my business to be something that, of course, puts money on on the on you know on the table, puts food on the table, I should say. But at the same time, equally as important is a positive force in the world, but specifically my community, right? And that's what what this dude is doing, right? He is 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 building a business, and and obviously I don't know what the sort of you know how he is going to scale it, make money, and things like that. But at the end of the day, it is a business, and he's figured out a way to do something good while also putting his foot in and in, in diving into the the entrepreneurial world as well which i i just i commend i think it, again in today's day and age and i think just life in general and probably every era it's been like big business make your money at the expense of the everyday person and i don't believe that it has to be that way right i don't think that we have to be living in this selfish selfish world that is like capitalism over everything, right? And there could be moral capitalism, right? There, there can be things like this where it's a business that sure makes money, but at the same time is helping a community and, and really fulfilling needs at the end of the day and not trying to take advantage of them in the process uh, just for the sake of the almighty dollar. I love this shit. And like, I hope things like this inspire anybody listening who's interested in like entrepreneurship and starting a business. Like start thinking about what, void or what problem you could solve right because this is what the dude did it's obvious that we hear this all the time it's very hard for migrants to find the place to live so he being the community and having that experience was like oh maybe i could help fill that void boom business and i think that's what we have to start thinking of right i think even myself as like creating content and things like that and being a personality my initial inclination was i need to be everything for everyone so that i can touch as many people as possible right like i need to be able to speak to every single person out there and relate to them and basically that was just like me watering myself down right losing myself within that and the content itself would suffer as a result right and that's why i got out of radio and specifically top 40 radio because that's what i you know what you're trained to do is sort of be everything for everyone right it's top 40 it's pop you're supposed to be able to speak to everybody for me realizing that I didn't want to dumb myself down, but also there's a lot of opportunity within just my own community, right? I don't have to be trying to, you know, uh, make myself fit into what is quote unquote popular right now. Like I have a whole community, a beautiful community that I love, that I want to help, that I can speak to and help and also find success within right so i think that's what what I, i'm trying to get at is like we oftentimes have these ideas that are just far too grandiose right and uh not grandiose in terms of like oh you're thinking too big kid you know uh dream smaller not like that but i think we like we shortchange ourselves a bit by thinking we we have to create like the next amazon in order to be successful or something like that right where it's like, nah, you can solve a problem within your own community and have a successful business that pays the bills while also like really, uh, you know, fills your heart at the same time. I guess that's the point I'm, I'm trying to make. It's like, you know, listen, a great business idea is a great business idea. If you come up with the next Amazon, God bless you if you have that in your head. But if you have other business ideas or interests, it sometimes is better to focus in on a very specific niche that you can sort of I don't want to say own, but like that's the wording you would use in business, a niche you would own. And then you could, you know, begin to scale up possibly. But, um, you know, I think don't undervalue or underappreciate your local community is what I'm trying to say, or your community at large, right? There's a lot of value there and you can find a lot of success. And like, that's what this shit, this podcast is, uh, I'm 
primarily, I mean, obviously we have, uh, I'm blessed that we have a, a very diverse audience as well, but like I'm on a, a Latin podcast network and specifically I speak to Latinos for the most part. You know, obviously a lot of the advice I give or, or talks or, or, or anything could be applied to, to anyone's life. But, you know, my main mission, my main goal is to be a representative for our community. And I've been able to find all the success I was searching for by just focusing in on what's important to me. So I guess that's what my point is on that whole, that whole ramble. Uh, for whatever ideas that you might be, you know, for tossing around right now in your life, just something to keep in mind. Now, with that said, let's uh, tie everything we talked about today in a neat little bow in a segment we call Conclusion Stew. Time for Conclusion Stew. Mm. All right, so there's not really much else to say about this ass whooping that happened in Alabama, uh, where these white guys, you know, they they just they got the ass whooping that was coming to them for a long time, like. God was like, listen, guys, I've been letting you off the hook for a very long time. Today's the day. Y'all, y'all have tested my patience. I am going to somehow, some way, send out a back signal to every every black man in a five mile radius, and they're gonna come to the defense of this uh this boat captain, and they are just going to teach your dumbasses a lesson today. So uh so that's that's my my recap of the brawl that happened in Alabama. And again speaks to humanity where we are right now these guys literally could have just been good humans and said oh, okay I, I get i get you're doing something difficult trying to park this gigantic boat why don't we move our little boat somewhere else because again it's far easier for us to relocate than it is for you um but no instead they had to be difficult they had to be selfish individuals and today they got a lesson in uh in humility so shout out to those those uh those men who came to the defense of, of that dude man amazing especially the it's like a 16 year old kid that literally jumped off the boat and swam to to the dock to help uh help this guy out which man he's a hero he's a hero uh now on this conversation with anita around the idea of casual sex and in general just being able to be alone finding comfort in being alone i obviously i made it into a whole bigger conversation than maybe what was being had but i think it just speaks to doing the work on yourself right i think filling that void and not inviting people or things into your life out of desperation or convenience, but being in a place where you're self-aware and also like just internally in such a good place that you're really only adding things of value, right? You're only inviting things in because they are elevating your life and providing you with, with something that you want, right? But you're never doing it from a place of need, a place of desperation. And you're never getting into a, a relationship or or holding on to a friendship merely out of convenience or just desperation, right? Understanding that like you want to be bringing in and attracting the best things into your life. And all of that starts from first being okay with yourself, loving yourself and, and loving your own company. And then everything else begins to kind of fall into place um, once you kind of do that hard work, I think. And shit, listen, it's not easy. I'm sitting here talking about like it's easier, you know, it's it's just like this easy thing. Just love yourself and everything will fall into place. And all of a sudden, the perfect person will fall out of the sky. I mean, listen, that doesn't you get those days, man, where you're you're sad or you're you're bummed out about whatever it is and you want to do the easy thing. You you know, you want to take the easy route. And sometimes you give into that temptation. That's human. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, when you get yourself in situations that genuinely make you happy you're going to be grateful that you held out, right? I think about that even in terms of my career and work. I could have gone down the route of just getting another radio gig, staying at the last radio gig, just getting a producer gig, this and that. But instead, I, I took the really hard and difficult route of going off on my own and figure out a way to build up you know, multiple streams of income and build up my business and, and do all of those different things, all that really hard work so that I could wake up every day and be fulfilled and happy um, and not be miserable with the things that I have to do, right? And I think I keep reminding myself of that, like, okay, you applied that to your career, you've held out, you've, you know, held out as far as while my other friends were, you know, buying the car, getting married, were buying the house, whatever it was, I held out to make sure that when I do those things, it's going to be on my terms. I'm going to buy the house, but I'm going to buy something that makes me money. I'm going to buy the house, but the money that is paying for it is going to come from a job that I love doing, right? Those are the little things that I like would reframe my my brain, you know? And uh, I think you just got to keep reminding yourself like this path is going to be more difficult, 
But at the end of the day, even if it takes longer and you have a, a few more you know, cuts and bruises than the average person, it's going to be worth it because you're going to actually have things and people in your life that are almost exactly what you want, right? Because nothing is that, nothing is perfect, but you know, is, is better than you imagine, honestly. For the most part, things have always turned out for me better than I even imagined. So that's just kind of the, the conversation I wanted to have off of that one. And then, of course, big shout out to our Latina queens here, Carol G and Shakira, nominated for MTV's Video Music Awards Artist of the Year. Again, someone like Carol G now sort of taking the baton that Bed Bunny has passed along, doing music in Spanish primarily, finding this sort of global success, crossover success, proves that Bad Bunny was not just an anomaly, continues to prove that our culture and our, our man, our energy and our creators and, and everything uh, can be universal and has so much value um, in this world that we all just have to keep uh, creating, keep, keep supporting everything that comes out um, because it just keeps knocking down the door for the next generation, which is beautiful. And then uh, this last story about Nicholas Gonzalez launching uh, Latino Rooms, a platform that helps immigrants find housing. Just inspirational shit. Like, again, it's it's somebody recognizing a need in our community and then being the person to say, you know what, fuck it. Nobody else is doing it. I'm going to do it, right? And then at the same time, also saying, I can create a business out of this, right? I can, I can possibly make a living doing this while also helping people and specifically while helping my community. And that's like a win-win. And anybody who's an entrepreneur or creator, whatever it is, like this should be an inspiration for maybe how you try to figure out what that thing is that you're going to be working on, right? What what might be your life's work or what might be that next thing that you chase after? Like, how do I do something that fulfills me, that feeds me, maybe both physically and also just mentally and spiritually, but then also um, is a positive force for the world? Like that's that's my goal with everything that I do. And and I think if more people adapted that type of mindset as a whole in, in this world would be far happier and, and there'd be far less suffering, I think, in general. So again, that conversation of humanity, humility, and, and hopefully you don't need to get a reminder of it like those white guys in Alabama did where the reminder comes in the form of a just grandiose ass whooping like we've never seen before. Now with that said, thank y'all so much for tuning into today's show. Again, uh, every Tuesday this month, we will be having uh, an episode based upon one of the four pillars of conscious living, right, for the Just Be Social Club. His last Tuesday was awareness. Um, so self-awareness, awareness of the relationship you have with others as well as the world around you. I got really deep in that one. So I, I, if you haven't checked it out, I would recommend that one. Just giving you an idea, I think, of like core things that have changed my life and, and made me a far better person and, and the person you're hearing today and that I continue to apply to my life moving forward check that out and Tuesday we'll be dropping another episode on that. It'll be on uh, on money healing. So we'll talk all about that. But without uh, further ado, have an amazing weekend. That's all I got for you today. I'll talk to you on Tuesday with a brand new episode. Till then, stay safe. We'll talk soon. Peace. Peace.